Welcome to Inside Operational Minds. This video series focuses on IFC's disruptive technology business in South Asia. We have visited our portfolio companies in their offices and brought to you their stories. Stories that highlight how these businesses are creating new markets and delivering on impact metrics while generating strong financial returns. Each of these examples demonstrates how erupting forces of technology are gradually disrupting the landscape of every industry. Hope you enjoy the series. Hi everyone, I'm Ruchira Shukla and I'm the regional lead for IFC's investments in disruptive technologies in South Asia. Having built a pretty wide portfolio of technology investments in India, we were looking to expand our business beyond India to new markets like Bangladesh. Bangladesh is the world's eighth largest populous nation with 160 million people. Also, Bangladesh has a very vast and growing internet population. It's 80 million people growing at 20% year on year. Therefore, this market represents an opportunity for new businesses to disrupt traditional sectors through technology. We went to the country and spent a lot of time looking at tech disrupting businesses and mapped about 50 of them. The most advanced of them was Chaldal. Chaldal is a leading e-grocery platform based in Dhaka. With me today is the founder and CEO of Chaldal, Vaseem Alam. Hi Vaseem, how are you today? Not bad, how are you Richard? Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to have you in Bangladesh. Wonderful to be here. Let's start with the background Vaseem. What led you to start Chaldal? Um, so we started Chaldal in 2013. I, along with two of my friends, Tejas and Zia, uh, we started. We wanted to work on something uh, related to technology, and we picked grocery because we saw that there were a lot of opportunities to apply new technologies uh, to make it uh, efficient. And plus, grocery is a sector that impacts almost everyone because everyone needs food. Um, so we wanted to work on something with really large impact. And that's very core to our strategy as well. IFC's retail sector strategy focuses on making products and services more accessible to people and with a focus on the food category. So, you know, your, your hitting on the food category is also very core to us. And it's a big market. Grocery in Bangladesh is a $30 billion market. And most of it traditionally was offered to small mom and pop show, uh, stores. A lot of people find it hard to get to the store given the traffic congestions in Dhaka. And so you're solving for a very important need. Besides, these stores are very small and often don't carry the full breadth of products or carry them at very high prices. Uh, that is correct. So Bangladesh is a country with a lot of people and really um, small uh, land mass. So one of the key challenges is real estate. So in a city like Dhaka, you have a lot of traffic and it's not possible to set up a store like Walmart because you just simply don't have that much space. And even if you did set it up, you can't drive enough customers to it. So we decided to take away the real estate uh, from the grocery and we allow people to order via an app or via their computers and we deliver it to them in one hour. The way we do it is by having uh, really small warehouses around Dhaka. We currently have nine warehouses. Every single re uh, resident of Dhaka is within a three kilometer radius of our uh, warehouse. So once they order, we deliver them through a bicycle or a motorbike uh, within one hour. We're actually experimenting with 15 minute deliveries in certain areas and we have to have it uh, rolled out by the end of the year. Um, so yeah. And actually, it's interesting. You talked about the absence of a Walmart in, in, in Dhaka, but I, and, and that's the large supermarket format. What we found in our diligence was that even small retail stores do not exist in certain neighborhoods. So you're solving for access to uh, low and middle income groups within Dhaka, several of, and that's actually the largest growing segment on your platform. Uh, that is correct. So Dhaka is a city that is growing very, very fast. So what happens is a lot of neighborhoods develop, but the retail infrastructure in those neighborhoods don't develop. So when people move into their houses for the first time, they find it more convenient to just order on Chaldal and we send them their uh, groceries within an hour. Um, we are actually uh, starting, so our model is something that works really well with high density. Uh, so we are thinking of piloting a program in the refugee camps, which has uh, like a lot of refugees came into the country last year and they're cramped in a very small space and we want to see if the Chaldal model can actually help them uh, get their food. So we have been discussing this with the WFP um, and we hope to have a pilot on it soon. 
So you've created a delivery construct that helps to serve to dense pop densely populated areas, including to refugee camps. When we started diligencing Chaldal, we realized that there wasn't any third party provider of scale for last mile delivery. And so you had to create your own structure. And in that process, that necessity has forced you to solve for a very important problem, which is last mile delivery within one hour or now in almost within 15 minutes. Um, that is correct. So Bangladesh is a market where uh, technology-wise uh, not much has happened. So uh, it's like a complete sketchbook. So yeah, you can actually think of these infrastructures from um, like first principles. So in the delivery side, for example, we are supporting a lot of small Facebook merchants to do deliveries through our, our inf uh, infrastructure. Um, also for the back end, we are actually connecting with farmers uh, who are able to sell to our platform and then we deliver it to small retailers uh, around the city. Um, so it is interesting to be working on this in Bangladesh because you can think of the whole thing from a fresh look and really recreate it. And in that process, Chaldal is hitting on several impact metrics that are important to IFC. Besides enabling access to key grocery products to lower and middle income segments, you're also allowing small mom and pop retail stores to get more revenues bringing better pricing to farmers that are now directly connected to their consumers and therefore don't need to go through several layers of middlemen. You're setting a new standards for delivery services for the last mile as well as creating jobs through your delivery network. Yes, I think the key for us is that we're dealing with highly perishable products. So if we can reduce the time it takes between a produce to reach a consumer and if we can reduce the wastage in the system and if we can reduce the information asymmetry because uh, physical markets require people to be present whereas online we can actually show them prices and give them better prices. I think we can really uh, change the trajectory of the sector in the country and how food is treated. And it's interesting to see the role of technology, uh, Vaseem, in your platform because that has enabled you to transform grocery retail in the country. And in the process, of course, you've grown rapidly. You've grown 3x in the last one year, uh, which is demonstrative of the kind of financial returns an investor can get. But it's actually a pity that the VC ecosystem in Bangladesh remains very nascent because most private investors are apprehensive of a market like Bangladesh. Um, and we, we realized that when we started investigating a potential investment in you. And um, we had to play the flag bearer role by going to the market first and realizing that it has the potential for change over the next several years, but us as IFC taking on that risk before other players will be demonstrative to them that we see as an asset class is viable in the country and that will draw more private capital to the country. So Bangladesh uh, VC ecosystem uh, is almost non-existent and it, it was much tougher even two years ago. So IFC's reputation actually made an impact. Like in the round that IFC participated, one of the largest financial institutions in the country actually also participated in investing in us. Before that, it was so difficult for us to raise money locally. Like we, we never managed to actually do that um, uh, because VC was not considered a proper asset class. Um, and now IDLC is actually launching its own venture capital fund. And this is stimulating the ecosystem because now entrepreneurs actually know that they can get funded uh, if they start a venture. Because without the presence of VC, it's not possible to actually have entrepreneurship uh, in, in, in these technologies. So yeah, thank you for like really uh, stimulating the Bangladesh ecosystem. The other thing that I think IFC has done is actually brought in the structure that others can follow. Because it takes a lot of effort and a lot of thought in creating creating the legal structures that is necessary for these sort of investments. And IFC has played a very significant role in doing that. Thank you. Very, very heartening to hear that IDLC has subsequently launched their own VC fund on the back of their experience with us investing in Chaldal. Um, another similar example was, of course, Patamar Capital. Patamar is a regional fund that was apprehensive of Bangladesh, joined uh, our appraisal meetings when we were doing Chaldal, and is now looking at uh, entering the market in a big way. So, and, and you hit on a great point. Uh, part of it is about building the confidence in these investors' mind uh, in the country and the promise that it represents, but it's also about getting the tactics right, working with them on, on the term sheet, on the legal structures, et cetera, which allow them to think that uh, they have the right documentation in place that's appropriate for that market. Um, and IFC cares a lot about creating markets. So in being the trendsetter for VC investments in the country, we are glad to see that more private capital is now coming in, which will spur tech entrepreneurship and it will spur digital disruption across sectors. 
Uh, absolutely. And the characteristics that Dhaka has, you know, limited real estate, densely populated, traffic congestions, these are characteristics that several emerging markets share. So your solution could easily be applicable in other emerging markets globally. In working in Dhaka, I think we have come up with the technology of micro warehousing and then coordination with the one hour delivery uh, that can work in other very similar cities. I think like cities like Bangkok, which have like same problems uh, and challenges as Dhaka or Cairo, I think we could go in and really actually provide value to the uh, grocery supply chain. And then we could work backwards um, in, in the grocery supply chain and create a large business. Uh, we look forward to actually partnering with IFC on this because IFC has such large presence in emerging markets and also the deep knowledge and expertise um, that we can tap into. So I hope that we can bring this proposition to you and you'll consider it. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words, Vaseem. Very nice chatting with you. Thank you, viewers. We're clearly very excited about our work in disruptive technologies in Bangladesh. If you're curious to learn more about Chaldal or about our work in disruptive tech, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm based in the Delhi office, and if you're in town, we can grab a coffee. Thank you.